Hello and welcome. We stand here today to remember, to honor, mm -hmm. and to lay to rest. We do not think it would happen in the early parts of December. But when can you ever predict a funeral? Brian, do you have any words for the 2019-2020 Philadelphia Eagles after losing to the Delphin Tank? You know, we, we, we started out so, so well. We had such high hopes. And to end here, to get to this point, there's never the right time. You know, usually at these points, we say that we fought the good fight. Mm. Can't say that today. You can't. We did not fight the good fight. No. We did not give our best effort. <sighs> it hurts. It does. It hurts deep down on the inside. To all the Eagles fans out there, we grieve together. And just know. Just isn't right. Just know one thing. Man, that fucking sucked. Damn. Damn. Come on, man. Damn. 37 points to Ryan Fitzpatrick. The Dolphins? The two and nine Dolphins. I there's a there's a oh, there's man. a title here. That by the way, are the Eagles officially dead? Not that, officially. That, that, that was our funeral. But they are dead. No, they're dead. They're dead. Oh, they're done. They're done. Nail in the coffin? Yes. Coffins nailed. Like also, fuck you, Cowboys, for giving us hope. Oh, my God. Got my hope up. They lose on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Hope is way up. I'm like, we're going to win a division. We're going to go smoke the Dolphins. I hope that what I'm about to say gets thrown into my face weeks from now if the Eagles win the division. Okay. The Eagles are dead. It's over. The season is done. Thanks for coming out. Push in your chairs. Tip your waitresses. Don't forget you checked a bag. Get the hell out of here. I hope that gets thrown in my face. I hope so, too. But it's not. There's an article here in a local Miami paper, which is Dolphins topple Eagles lose chance to move up to number three in the NFL draft. Oh, wow. We lost to a team that is upset that we, we hurt their chances to tank it for Tua or Burrow for Burrow. Well, you also have to remember, when we look at the standings of records right now, that team that was tanking, that gave up their left tackle for a bunch of picks. They're only two games behind us. That's it. We only, uh, we've only won two more games than that football team. The Eagles have That's the same record as Jameis Winston. Oh, wow. The Eagles Turnover machine. have a worse record than the failing Chicago Bears. Unbelievable. <coughs> and so many people thought Mr. Trubisky, myself included, worst quarterback ever. And Carson Cleveland Wentz Browns the, are the yeah. most disappointing team in football. Oh, my goodness. Same record as the Eagles. Disappointing. You know when I knew this was going to happen? When? When I should have predicted it. When everybody predicted the Eagles to win the Super Bowl. When everybody that one week in the offseason was like, Eagles are the deepest team in football. And Carson Wentz will be the MVP. I have a cough. I'm not that sad. <laughs> you should be sad with that cough. We wore all black today. Yes. To mourn. To mourn. To show our respects. When it was 10 nothing, I texted Athy and Lapone in my group chat, and I said, this is a massacre. Yeah. And it all turned. But then it went 28-14. to 14. No, the first play of the game, I'm like, yep, oh, there he is. I told you. Ronald I Darby. knew it. Ronald Darby, we're about to get this thing rolling. 10 zip. Then at halftime, I'm saying, okay, 21-14. Eh, a little bit closer than I thought it should be, but easily we'll win this game by right. 10, at least. Because I put money on the game. Doug, you did? Yes. 
real hurt, money? Hurt real money. A hundred bucks. Wow. A hundred bucks of my real hard earned money. Minus ten. Minus. 10. I want the Eagles to win the division. I have like multiple hundreds dollars of them to win the division. Every team has scored a bunch of points against this team, and our defense has been playing pretty doggone good against Russell Wilson and Tom Brady. Doug Peterson told uh, WIP this morning he is disgusted, mad, and angry. My group chat, like I'm sure many Eagles group chats, and by the way, we're going to talk about the whole NFL, but when your team loses to the Miami Dolphins, it's a big story, and they were a Super Bowl favorite, Mm. so bear with me. We were going, who doesn't get on the flight home? There's a lot of people calling out Howie Roseman Mm -hmm. right now for the way this team is constructed. When you allow 37 points to just really lob balls to Devontae Parker and carries to Patrick Laird. Yeah. Uh, who looks like a grocery store clerk? Works at a, a lot of people are going. This one's on Jim Schwartz. Um, you are someone that knows this organization. Yes. Do does anyone lose their gig, or does anyone did anyone maybe not lose their gig this week, but at the end of the year, this game may have lost them their job? Well, listen. I mean, shoot, even the great Dave Phipp, special teams coordinator. Yeah. I mean, well, that little trick play, really. How many trick plays can teams run against the Eagles? Yeah, I'm, I'm with the trick play deal, but I, I blame and set this loss at the foot, the feet of Doug Peterson. Okay. I mean, directly there, and here's the reason why. It's your job as the head coach to get your team to understand Dallas just lost on Thursday. We have a chance at this point, despite all the crazy stuff that's going on, despite the injuries, despite Carson Wentz not playing up to this level, despite all the things that have happened on the defensive line and the secondary, all the things that surrounded your team, people calling out the quarterback, you know, inside the, the locker room snitches. We still got a chance to control our own destiny, make it into the playoffs. Sure. And it all comes down to the next five weeks of football. So all I need you guys to do is dedicate yourself for five weeks. And that's going to help us and make us force our way into the playoffs. And when we get into the playoffs, it's anybody's game. That's the conversation I wanted Doug Peterson to have. This football team this weekend looked unprepared, didn't look to seem that they wanted to execute properly. This team looked like, you know, that special play, that little trick play. How about Doug just says, listen, this is a look that we weren't anticipating. We're just going to call a timeout. And we're going to get all our guys on the sideline and say, hey, they may do all these different things on this play. Let's make sure we just check our guy. How about we just call a timeout there? What's the harm? Because what could have helped was you could have saved the touchdown. The harm, you had three t- three timeouts. So there's no harm in doing that. What's the harm in adjusting during the game? Why Bill Belichick is so special is because he doesn't adjust just at halftime. He adjusts in between series. He pulled his defense together last night, even though they didn't win. And, and he has the whole entire defense huddled around him, going over, you do this and you do that. And when they do this, we're going to do this, that, and the other. Yeah. Not one time did we see that from Doug Peterson. So much so that the Dolphins' running offense – is so laughable. They're terrible. That no one has had to put extra guys in the box all year. And yet, I'm still watching on multiple possessions, Devontae Parker jumping over either Ronald Darby or Jalen Mills one-on-one. Hey, guys, the only offense they have is a lob ball to Devontae. Let's take that away. That one thing. Just take that away. That's the only thing. I mean, that was responsible for, like, two of the touchdowns and, like, 60% 60% of their yards. Mike Kosecki had a good game, too. The tight end. He, had, he, he had a good game. A couple good catches. such garbage. Well, listen, this is, this, is what, this is what Doug said. And he said in his... his Kosecki uh, is not good. He's not good. No, but with... with and he, but that's what I'm saying. It's Parker, worse about the Eagles. Well, yeah, but they were in position to make the play. They didn't execute. They didn't make the play. So that tells me that those guys aren't good enough. They're just I, not good enough. I don't know what it is about it. But when you're watching, like I'm watching Patriots Texans. Yes. And you know how they put up the standings for the playoff? And it's got the division leaders and it's got the two wild cards. And then it's got that one column that says in the hunt. I fucking hate it. Yes. There's something about looking up and seeing the Eagles at five and seven Still in the hunt. with with the Vikings and Seahawks sitting there at nine and two and eight and three. 
And I'm looking at him going, we're not in the hunt. What hunt? We've been hunted. We are currently on somebody's wall as a plaque going, the Miami Dolphins, we beat the Eagles. We are the team right now where people get like to get that win. And like they're saying right now that Brian Flores is a coach of the year candidate. Uh-huh. That's what beating us, that's the point of us playing right now. We're someone's homecoming game. That's we what are. we are. We're, we're, we're homecoming. Home oh, bring the Eagles in. Oh, Let's yeah. play for homecoming. Homecoming. We'll get an easy win there. Yeah. We're that team. Carson Wentz did look better, though. He looked better. But there's, I mean, good to have Alshon back. Alshon and Carson seem to have a small connection there. That That's a great Nelson thing. Aguilar had a great game. He did. A great, a great game. He had one play that I thought game. was phenomenal that got called back by penalties where he like broke like six tackles, had a big catch at the end of the game where they were trying to get it. Really, when it comes down to this is one of those 41 losses. yards is what he had. That's yeah, not a great game. For him. I, I live in a vacuum well, we, of. We have to judge it by the average on the NFL, not just him. No, I, look, a lot of this is, I, I, it's weird because everyone's blaming Howie Roseman right now. But before the year, all they talked about was how the Eagles were the deepest team in the NFL. They were mistaken. And and that when you looked at the wide receiving core with Alshon and Deshaun and Nelson and J, uh, and Mac Hollins and J.J. Ortega-White, mm-hmm. and now we just realized that all that depth was nothing. Oh. Remember I said I bet the Eagles to win. I also bet J.J. Ortega-Whiteside to get his first touchdown. Oh, did you and get that? And he did. Nice. 800 bucks. Wow. In pocket. Appreciate that. Um... I think we have some losses to figure out, but as an aside, I don't, I don't know what to call this. So I looked it up. It's an embarrassment, is what it is. It's but, an embarrassment. Uh, so the teams, three of the teams that won yesterday, mm-hmm. and I don't know who should be more embarrassed. Actually, I do. Miami beat Philly. Yes. Cincinnati beat the Jets. The Jets should be very embarrassed. But at the same point, I'm more embarrassed because I should have known that, like, if you're in the New York Post on Monday for making out with girls at bounce after you beat the Raiders, I should have right there been like, I'm betting Bengals money line. Yes. Like I like that. I'm embarrassed for myself. I fucked you, you that up. You missed that, right? Yes. Uh, the other one, though, to me, I believe is the most embarrassing is that Washington went into Carolina at home. Carolina still trying to get done up 14 nothing. Yes. And they lose. And props to our guy, Darius Geis, ditched the playbook. Yes. No longer a curse. Absolutely a bet. That was his big, his first big game. Though, 10 right? carries, yes. 129 yards, and a stiff arm that was incredible. Ran the ball well. But if you did a money line parlay, on Washington, Miami, and Cincy. Washington, Miami, both going off at plus 425. If you bet $100, you would have made $6,100. Oh. But here's the thing. I, the first thing I thought is, well, it used to be Dolphin Tank, but now they got three wins. Yes. It used to be Bengals Tank. Mm-hmm. They won. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it's going to be. It was getting, it's inching closer and closer to being... The Eagles tank. We're getting closer to that. I hope. We're, we're getting closer. The All way right. that they played. Let's go to the tank, because I don't know what it's going to be called. Welcome back to Bengal Tank. Oh, wait, the Bengals won this week. Let's call it Redskin. T- no, they also won. <laughs> All right, let's just go back to the original Dolphin Tank. Oh, snap, they beat the Eagles. LOL, crying, laughing face emoji. <laughs> this week, it's Eagle Tank. Ah, crap. Wow. First into the Eagle Tank. Lefko believes one particular NFL head coach is like a University of Arizona basketball recruit. Well paid, but one and done. Ooh, very good joke right there. Um, I think it should be Giant Tank. The Giants are 2-10. and ten. They're bad. They're bad. Bad, bad. They're getting absolutely shellacked. Yep. Uh, that's not the coach I'm talking about. Uh, I believe that there is a coach in the NFL right now that is one and done. So you can look at all of the the coaches uh, that have started their first year. Yeah. Uh, it's clearly not going to be Matt LaFleur. Nope. Um, Brian Flores, he'll, he'll keep his job. They're building for Clearly. Mm-hmm. People are saying he could be up for coach of the year. Uh, I, if I was going to break it down for who it could be, it could be Gase. Yeah. It could be Kitchens. Mm-hmm. But really, I'm asking, are you buying it? And then I'll tell you who it is afterwards. Am, am I buying that the coach should be one and done? Ask me any questions. Um, what's the record? The team's record? Uh, I can't give you. I'll give it away. Uh, of course you would. Yeah. They have more losses than they have wins. 
Yeah, the, he should be done. He should be done. Okay, who do you think I'm talking about? Kitchens or Gase. Oh, you think they both should be done? Either one. I mean, I, I think that – here's the thing. That's First interesting. Year, Wasn't expecting that. I was thinking Kitchens, but now you have to talk about Gase. Well, well here's the thing, though. First-year coaches have to be able to ve- develop the quarterback. They both have young quarterbacks. You have to be able to develop it. I don't think that Freddie Kitchens has shown a, 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 the ability to develop uh, Baker Mayfield or control his football team or, for that matter, control himself with the doggone T-shirt. Uh, you know, That coming. really upset people. Did it upset you a lot that he wore a, a Pittsburgh started it shirt that his kids got him for his birthday and he wore it to the movies? It didn't upset me. What it did was it showed that he's missing the point. He's missing the point that you don't need to give out bulletin board material because your team isn't that good. You're missing the point that your team has been in the media so much preseason, during the season, and at this point, and they still can't dog on when you're 5-7. and seven. So you're just missing the point. So not only can you not lead your team, but at this point, you're not helping your team either. You're regularly hurting your football team. So let's so compare. Let's compare. This is interesting. I didn't think about going this way. Gase and Kitchens thus far. Mm-hmm. Gase, the benefit that he has is that Sam Darnold missed five or six weeks. Yes. And so he had a week of two weeks of Luke Falk, who yep. was cut and then has not been picked up, which shows you the quarterback play he was playing with. His signature win this year, in my opinion, was the win over the Cowboys at home, 24-22, to 22, and he had a three-game winning streak, uh, wins over the Giants, Washington, and Oakland. Okay. Um, other than that, that, lose, that loss to the Bengals was bad, and they also did lose in Miami, yeah, which absolutely. any team that loses in Miami should just be relegated. So, I mean, I, I don't have a, necessarily a, a problem with Adam Gase. I don't know that he's the guy to make this team go to the next step. He hasn't shown me the same type of things that we've seen from Freddie Kitchens. Right. Now, Freddie Kitchens. Freddie Kitchens' signature win was a win at Baltimore in week four. Great win. Doesn't even make sense how it happened. No clue. Nick Chubb ran wild. Yep. It does make sense how it happened. Warren Sharp talked about it all the time. At that point of the year, Baltimore had a huge issue guarding 11 personnel all Cleveland played was 11 personnel. It was a perfect storm. And even as we saw on Sunday, you can run on the Ravens. Yes. And Nick Chubb ran wild. Baker Mayfield kept his mistakes to a minimum. Baltimore and Mark Ingram had a fumble. Much better since that point. Uh, the Browns also went on a three-game winning streak yep. with a win over the Bills, which is also a great win. A win over the Steelers, which was marred at the fact that Miles Garrett spiked a helmet into the cranium of Duke player Mason Rudolph. And they beat the Miami Dolphins losing to Duck Hodges and the Steelers. I guess my issue between the two, you think about the um, controversies they've had. Mm -hmm. Freddie Kitchens has had the Miles Garrett controversy, the T-shirt controversy. Discipline, uh, discipline again. A lot of discipline. Um, Most penalized team in the NFL probably. I think in the modern era of the game. Probably the most turnovers. Again, discipline. Uh, but, But I think out of the two... I believe that the Browns offense has felt more out of sorts in a lot of their losses where I feel like the Jets in this last stint, Sam Darnold was healthy. He was playing well. What putting up six points in Cincinnati is deplorable. It's awful. But, it, I do feel like Kitchens has had a worse year. The, what what Gase has gone through, he had the the Kalecio Semele controversy. Uh, he's had injured players complaining. Right. Um, but also, shit, man. They're both bad. Kitchens feels one and done to me. This is why Freddie Kitchens is so bad. Because the expectation. You pay, I mean, you paid a bunch of money to get Odell Beckham Jr. on your football team. Jarvis Landry is a Pro Bowl player. Nick Chubb is going to be a pro bowler this year. You have talent. Baker Mayfield, first-round talent. Was he, he was first overall, right? Oh, yeah. So, you, you, I mean, you have a bunch of talent on that football team. The defense has some talent, too. Denzel Ward, I don't know what the heck happened. It just looks crazy out there at this point. You got a bunch of talent across the board on your whole team. The one thing you had to do, your job as a head coach, was to provide character and culture. Character is going to do make this locker room come together. Your culture, same type of thing. And he hasn't provided that. At some point, you got to say, Baker, you know what? This is what I need you to say to the media. Because you're the face of our franchise with me. We're, we're both the face of the franchise. Here's the message we're going to go forward with. We're working hard. We're working our butt off. Our heads down, nose to the ground. And we're just going to work. We ain't going to talk to the media. We're just going to grind and get better. First game of the season, you get blown out by, by the, uh, the Titans. And the Titans were like, listen, 
Everybody loves them. They're the best, next best thing. We wanted to go up there and smack them in their mouth, and they did that. Kevin At Byard, that point. Yeah. At that point, you say to your team, listen, we haven't had no easy games. We got a target on our back. Now it's time to grind even harder. That never happened for this football team. I have one way That's that Freddie Kitchens can save his job. He can do something that hasn't been done in Cleveland in 12 years. Hmm. And that's get them to eight wins. Okay. They're five and seven right now. Yeah. They have two games against the Bengals, one game against the Cardinals, yep. and a game against the Ravens. So they would have to win three. I don't I don't know that they can do that. If the Browns can beat the Bengals twice mm -hmm. and the Cardinals, and they end the season at eight and eight, it will be the most wins since 2007 under Romeo Cornell. If you can win three out of four, that also means that you would win six out of your last eight. What This happens in the NFL, and it's something that's frustrated me forever. Remember that one year where Adrian Claiborne had six sacks in one game? Yep. And then the end of the year, he had 10 sacks and was like, wow, what a great year. Or JPP did it one year where he had six sacks against Winston Justice right. on the Eagles. That's At the right. end of the year, you're like, wow, what a great year. Like... So, so many of the Eagles sacks this year have come against the Dolphins the worst teams. and the worst teams. Mm -hmm. If you end the year going six of eight and the Bengals defense, you should have some success against. We saw what the Rams did to Arizona's right. defense. If And let's say that that Ravens game, maybe Ravens arresting people in week 16, you give a little bit more fight. That's possible. We look at the end of the year, we go, oh, wow, they went eight and eight. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I, I think it's if you can survive that first Black Monday – where there's an average of six, seven, eight coaches fired. Mm -hmm. I think that we'll look back and we'll forget all the nonsense because we just look at the record. Well, we look I don't, at the I don't, I don't, if you're an owner, that's not what you look at. Yeah, but I, Jimmy Haslam is an idiot. If you're an owner, you say, well, well why do we get Odell Beckham Jr.? We could have did this without him. Why do we? Why are we You know, still dealing with some of the nonsense? The noise. In is this the guy that's going to take us to the next level? Let's say he can get to 8-8. Eight and eight. Can he get us to 10-6 and six next year? Can he get us to 12-4? and four? That's a big question because I, the same things keep happening. And this shirt thing, that's to me, that's huge. And it doesn't mean he's going so to win and lose. So it is big to you. To me, it's big because it, it also shows, and, and I'm talking about you have to use everything. This yeah. is why it's big because you have to look at the, to, the, the, the total of everything. Yes. The coach is out there with that on? Really? The coach? Yeah. Not Baker Mayfield. Not some of these young players. Yeah. The guy that's supposed to set the example, he's doing that? Come on. I know. Come on. This is the guy that's supposed to say, hey, everybody come around me, and I'm going to show you the way to victory. That's the guy that's doing that? Yeah. That's uh, the guy you got to follow? It is going to be interesting with Freddie Kitchens going forward. I think also the one excuse I want to make for Freddie Kitchens is when have we ever seen a team – go out and sign a lot of free agents and hire a new coach and have success the first year. Very rare. That, that's another one where, like, we should have seen it coming. How many of these dream team times mm -hmm. do we need to see them fall into their face where instead of going big expectations, we go, oh, no, they're going to suck. Just know they're going to suck. Like, we should have known well, this. It, it takes brother. time for them to come together. I think what you want to see out of teams like that that are built this way is some character, some discipline. You want to see something that says, you know, this gives me the idea that they're going to be better next year. We, yeah. haven't, we haven't seen that from this football team. Damn, I just realized that I picked – who did I pick as my wild cards in the – I think one of the wild cards I picked was the Steelers. I, You know, listen, I, I thought that the Browns would come in into this game and, and run all up and down. They I mean, were. They started off no like Connor, that 10 nothing. No Juju. They started exactly like the Eagles. Duck is – I mean, you know, the I mean, it's, it's At one point in the second quarter, the yardage was something like 150 to 9 yeah. for the Browns. Yeah. And then Duck hit a few deep balls to James Washington. But what Duck is doing is not losing. And the Steelers have a very dangerous defense. They have legitimate pass rushing threats and TJ. Watt and Bud Dupree. Absolutely. Minka in the back has mm -hmm. added a free safety that has allowed the other Edmonds guy to play more in the box. The corners, the fact that Joe Hayden is the one that sealed the deal with a pick, the former Brown, yes. was mwah, perfect. They have speed everywhere. They have really good leadership along the defensive line. I just don't want the Steelers to make the playoffs because I think they're really fucking boring to watch. The team that I want to get in the playoffs is the Titans. They have blown me away. I want to apologize. It's but what did I say to you last week? 
one of it was one of the, the Dolphin Bengal Giant Eagle tanks. Uh-huh. Derrick Henry is going to change the playoff well, picture. This is the time of the year. And that's yeah. what he did. Time of the year. That loss for the Colts, epic. Huge. 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 Also, listen, I love Adam Vinatieri. I love him. This isn't the Irishman. It doesn't have to go for three and a half hours. Uh-huh. Just show the man the door. That's it. That was pop culture. I like that. Netflix. I, I watched that the other day, too. I watched it, and then I fell asleep, and then I finished it was, watching it. Long. And it was every Martin Scorsese hours. movie I've ever seen. And I felt like it was like a bunch of old guys making a movie about, hey, we're really upset that our kids don't visit us. We so had here's the stars a movie. from our movie stars from the last 15, 20 years all in one movie. Yeah, and I would say that if you've been wanting to see a movie with De Niro and Pacino together, go watch fucking Heat. It's ten yeah. times better. A little bit better. Yeah. yeah. This is a long right. movie, a long story. I don't know how Ingrid feels. We'll get next tank. Next into the Eagle Tank. Ah. Lefko thinks one current NFL contract will go down as the worst free agent signing in history. And it's sad, too, because it's entirely possible that Lefko has a framed photo of this man right beside his bed at this very moment. You know who it is. I'm making this week's tank very simple. It's like the worst free agent signing of all time. $88 million. The $88 million one. He got benched yesterday. Mm. 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 Nikki, Nikki Six. Yep. My guy, Nick. I was actually talking about Malcolm Butler. Oh. No, I'm just uh, kidding. <laughs> Nick, oh, Malcolm. No, Nick Foles. You know, so here's the deal about Nick Foles. It's going to go down as the worst. I mean. You think Mar- so, the worst? I think Marone is going to lose his job. I mm-hmm. think that Coughlin should be following suit. Yep. Um, and I think that I watched Gardner Minshew come in yesterday and provide an instant spark. Now, granted, he threw a pick inside the end zone, but he's a rookie that went undrafted or yeah. later in the round, so I'm not expecting. But Nick Foles went in there and led three three and outs mm-hmm. and three interceptions. Yes. And had a fumble return for a touchdown. Yes. And in the last weeks, we've been talking about Jacksonville. This is a team that I thought was going to win the South Mm -hmm. because the talent they had on defense didn't know they were going to trade Jalen Ramsey. But in the last few weeks, they've lost to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers by 17, the Titans by 22, the Colts by 20, and the Texans by 23. Mm -hmm. Awful. Well, here's the thing about Nick Foles. And I think People in Philly, in particular, think that he's... He's a god. He's walking on water. He's an angel. Because he won the Super Bowl. But 7 of 14 for 93 yards and an interception. Nick Foles has always been a backup quarterback. Oh. That's what he's been. And if you look at his numbers throughout his career, they, they obviously speak to that. He's always been a backup quarterback. And he has the ability to come in in a short span of time, just like a lot of other backups. Gardner Minshew was in the same way, and add a spark right away. But usually, over the test of time, 16 games, you start to see blemishes and holes in his game. And that's what we've seen every time he's become the starter. Holes in his game. It happened in Philly last year. Holes in his game. It happened when he went out to St. Louis. Holes in his game. It happened in Jacksonville when he came back from injury. Holes in his game. He's just a limited player. Listen, I can't blame him for taking the money. Take the dog on money. Absolutely. I blame the Jacksonville Jaguars for thinking that this guy was going to come in and win games for you. What I did thought, you see? I, I, I thought he was. Too. No, well, then you weren't being honest with yourself. You were drinking the Kool Aid from the dog on Super Bowl. How could I not? What do you mean? How could you not? Did he look like a franchise saver? How much money do you think Nick Foles has made in his career? He's played eight seasons. He's played five with the Eagles, uh-huh. one with the Rams, uh-huh. one with the other Rams when they moved, one with the Chiefs, and one with the Jaguars. One fifty. 150 million? Yeah. No. He's made 62 million. But he just said he had an 88 million dollar well, contract. Some of that's to be owed to him. Yeah. So if he finishes this contract, he ends at about 120. Okay. It's close. Which is incredible. Well, he got how much did he get paid last year? He got paid last year in Philly as a backup. 12 million. 12. Well, that's I mean, that's a lot, a lot of dog on money. A lot of incentives. A lot of incentives. Had. They had Man, listen. I said this about the Eagles last year that I wanted them to keep Nick Foles and pay him 15 million and name Carson Wentz the starter and name Nick Foles the closer. 
<laughs> and what you do is you let Carson play the first 14 games, right. and then you bring in Foles for the playoffs. I thought it was genius. Yeah. Because I think Nick is great when he comes in when everything's falling apart. That's right. Because Nick's specialty is not the first 10 plays of the game. Mm-mm. It's when everything's going to shit and someone's got to lob up a beautiful 50-50 ball. Yeah. And that's what he does. Yeah. And does a great job at it. He is a second-string guy, and everybody loves a second-string quarterback until they become the starter. Until they they become the guy that you have to depend on all the time. And then you realize, you know what? He's not that good. He's not as good as I thought he was. That's Nick Foles. And I love Nick Foles. Great guy. He's just not as good enough to be a starter in the NFL. It's wild. All right, let's go back to (sighs) Eagle Tank. Uh, Damn it. And finally, into the Eagle Tank. Lefko is not looking for an investment. He's looking for forgiveness. <laughs> Can Brian Westbrook find it in his heart? Two podcast partners with a disagreement, but a shared love of football. This Christmas, NFL stands for National Friendship League. It's The Apology, rated PG-13. You're right, because I may curse. I want to apologize to not just you, yeah, but to the entire city of Houston. You should. I have been saying all year long that they will be a team of regression. Mm -hmm. I laughed in your face when you said they were going to win the division. Right here in my face. I laughed in your face. I even think two weeks ago that you said the Texans were going to beat the Patriots. Horrible things that you've done to me. I think that I owe you a money, but I don't owe you a money because you owed me a money. I feel like you owe me a lots of money. I do not. But I want to apologize. You were right. I was wrong. That, that's it? Is that it? Yeah. I feel like it was it was insincere. It was just kind of like, eh, you're just doing it just because I want a different apology. Go. That's not how apologies work. <laughs> I want a new one. No, you this were, wasn't worth it. You were it. right and I was wrong. Okay, that feels better. Yeah. Because I know that it hurts you. I know that it hurts you of deep course. down on the inside. Like, you may be putting on this little well, facade it's now, because it's but not, that hurts you. It's not just because you said it. It's because it's Bill O'Brien. It's Romeo Cronell. Yeah. It's like... There's no one that I th- – like, Ro- Bill O'Brien looks like a gas station owner that just, I do it my way. Don't tell me what to do, kid. <laughs> Listen, I do leaded, leaded on premium. That's how I've always done it. <laughs> leaded on premium. And so, like, I look at Bill O'Brien and I go, here comes Bill Belichick. And, and Bill O'Brien's acting as GM and he's just trading for anybody and he's giving – he's mortgaging the future and – I, I don't even and, – and really, everything has broken his way. Everything. Nick Foles gets hurt and ends up being a sack of dog crap. Uh, Andrew Luck goes down. That's right. Do you know the Indianapolis Colts in their game yesterday, their top five weapons that they came into the season with, none of them played at wide receiver? Mm-hmm. Paris Campbell. Like, you forget Devin Funchess and T.Y. Hilton. Yeah. They were e- – Eric Ebron. He's not out there. And then, like – the biggest threat to the Texans right now is Ryan Tannehill. That's right. That's crazy. And that's but a good team. I'm not. Yeah. Let me. What the Texans did to the Patriots on Sunday night was beautiful. Mm-hmm. They were ready for everything. Patriots did a surprise zone. Can't do that against Deshaun. Nope. Deshaun's too smart. Yep. Pick that bad boy apart. Oh, you're going to double Hopkins? Okay. That's what we got. Well, then. I get to use Kenny Stills, That's man right. to man. Mm-hmm. Also, Romeo Cornell doing what Belichick does, double teaming Edelman, allowing you to run on him because whatever, we'll stop it eventually, and forcing you to beat, forcing you to beat him with Jacoby Myers and Matt Lacoste. It was a per. Uh, you know damn well who this is. It's Sorry over. Now. It's over, Lefko. The entire run is over. I can't believe it. After so many incredible seasons, I just can't believe that Netflix would cancel BoJack Horseman. (laughs) Oh, did you think I was talking about the Patriots dynasty being over? Not a chance in New York, my dude. That's West Roxbury for not a chance in hell. Jets suck, Yankees suck. In fact, me and my buddies are over here slamming celebratory triple deckers with crispy onions at the Wahlburgers at the Hingham Shipyard, baby. Belichick has planned this one to perfection. Bill O'Brien's now a lock to make the playoffs, which is only 
only good news for, oh, the entire AFC. Every defense we face for the rest of the year is going to send some friggin' kindy godness to God Edelman and Dorsett. And meanwhile, the friggin' Ravens are like a mall Santa peaking in early December and then having to face a line of disappointed children come January when they found out their wishes did not come true. Oh, shut up. We're 10 and two. We're going to get a first round bye. And if you were going to name a dude on another team, who's actually a mole working for the good people of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to help the Patriots in the second round of the playoffs, wouldn't his name kind of definitely be Sean McDermott. We're fine. Chase Vinovich and Gunnar Olszewski are the same person there. I said it. Pat, Pat out. (laughs) <laughs> Pat always confident. Listen, I think the Patriots, they have four games left. Two of them are very tough for them. Who do we got? So you have the Chiefs. We got the Bengals, easy game. We got the Bills and then the Dolphins. Man. So the Chiefs and the Bills, obviously the Chiefs, we all know, Patrick Mahomes throwing the ball all over the place. But the, excuse me, the Chiefs, yeah. But the Bills are the team that played them the toughest all season long. That always give them problems. Do you know that if the Bills went out, Boom. they win the AFC East? Boom. And get a bye? And for the and first the time in the last locker? 25 years. Can't even imagine. Boom. I don't want to gloss over the Texans, though. We can't. You shouldn't. Because there are a few teams in this league that you can be better than in all three phases, and you can still lose to. Mm-hmm. And the Texans are one of those teams. That's right. Texans, Chiefs, Seahawks, Packers, the teams with... Uh, and the Ravens, teams with a quarterback that can just do things that you can't stop. There was a sequence last night or Sunday night that caught my attention. Watson drops back, throws a 30-plus yard touchdown to Will Fuller, back of the end zone. They're going up two, three scores. Holy crap, challenged, taken back. The very next play, Kenny Stills, deep touchdown. Mm -hmm. This is the boogeyman. This is the Patriots defense. And what's so wild is I have shit on Bill O'Brien so many times. But to go out and get Laramie Tunsil, yep. to go out and get Stills, mm-hmm. to go out and, and get Vernon Hargraves, who had a very big Great game last up. night. Yeah, absolutely. The pass rusher they traded to the Seahawks, they traded Clowney to the Seahawks, the guy they got back, Martin. I mean, Chris Collinsworth couldn't shut up about him. And all I could think about was the Texans are winning a regular season game that's going to lock Bill O'Brien in as the head coach GM that's right. because it came out on Sunday morning the Texans might not hire a GM next year. Mm-hmm. And the guy they were going to hire was Nick Casario from the Patriots. Right. I, I know Pat Pat's joking. I'm kind of not. I have always believed that Bill Belichick sometimes purposefully loses to his former assistants to keep them in positions so that he can use them at later times. They were going to sue the Texans. Bob Graffel was going to sue the Texans. Now Belichick gets to keep Nick Casario locked away in a closet, scouting out the Gunnar Olszewskis of the world. Mm -hmm. And if they do face the Texans in the playoffs – they're going to beat the crap out of them. You think so? I think the Texans are a very good team at home. Okay. I can go with that. I do not see them going into Foxborough and winning. Now, the Texans are 8-4. and four. But let me just say, because I keep qualif- qualifying everything, congratulations, Houston. You're a very good team with an incredible quarterback, and I have talked way too much tra- trash about Bill O'Brien, but now I have to cough because clearly I don't mean it to. Well, this is what we saw in the game. You had the worst cough in America. This is what we saw in the game. We saw the, the Patriots dominate time of possession. Yep. Total yards, obviously rushing. It was all and deceiving. Re- and, and, yeah. yeah, but it's all deceiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. But what we also saw – was the Houston Texans walk in? Was it the secondary linebackers walked in like, listen, wearing SWAT team uniforms? I couldn't believe it. I, I, you know, this is what I like, and, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll bring it back from the Baltimore game. I, before the Baltimore Patriots game, I said the Ravens aren't scared by the Patriots, and a big part of the the Patriot lore is when you walk into Foxborough, if you play these guys, yes. if you see Bill Belichick and Tom Brady walking into your stadium, there's a little bit of fear. But there. what's the commonality between both of those teams? Both of those games were in Baltimore and Houston. On the road, absolutely. And that, but the Patriots will still somehow end up 
with a with Atlanta. This this game last night I thought was important because you had a team with three very good receivers. One one of them, which is elite, yes. Hopkins, and you can't you don't as good as the Patriots secondary is. They don't have three guys. No, they just don't. McCourty was out too. They don't have three guys to to handle three different guys. And I'll tell you this. Coming into the game, I thought that Houston would run the ball a little bit more than they did because I think Carlos Hyde has been playing well all season. Yeah. And he only I don't think he only got a handful of maybe 10, 12 carries. And so I, I I still think they have some more options there. But anytime you have Deshaun Watson on your team, who can be Superman, that's going to give his guys opportunities down the field, which I, I kind of I, we kind of glossed over it. Ryan Fitzpatrick, that's what he did to his guys. Yeah. Just throw it up and give his guys, just go be an athlete, go figure it out. Deshaun is up there in the top three for most beautiful deep balls. No doubt NFL. about it. No doubt about so it. So they end their their season. They're te- they're eight and four. They play the Titans twice, weeks 15 and 17, which is going to be, I mean, that's fighting it out now for the AFC South with the Titans going out there and beating the Colts. A game against the Broncos at home, they should win. Yep. Broncos, uh, Locke, Drew Locke, I thought had some good moments. I thought I've had a lot of Broncos fans in my mentions talking about how great he was. Cortland Sutton is a phenomenal wide receiver. Big player. That one catch he had was incredible. That P.I. at the end of the game was absolute dog shit. Right. But I don't give the Chargers any benefit of the doubt. They're the worst run organization in the NFL. They don't understand analytics. Nope. They're guessing all the time. Okay. Phillip Rivers has been done for two years. No. It's over. It's over. Phillip Rivers enjoys throwing balls in the dirt more than he enjoys completing passes. I thought Phillip Rivers and the Chargers had a chance last year. Last year. I think year. they squandered it, and now And then this when I year, saw that they had to go to Foxborough in the playoffs, I said, oh, they don't have a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they don't even know what they're – they're like, hey, we're going to run the same thing that we ran against the Ravens, no, against the Patriots. But uh, if the Texans run the table and they go 12-4, and four, it's a lot of teams that need to run the table. But the biggest thing that happened yesterday is my prediction – is now one step closer to being right. And what was that prediction? That the Baltimore Ravens will be the number one seed in the AFC, and I said it in fucking August. Well, I think that you I mean you saw something that no one else saw, and it was a development of the quarterback getting much, much better. Yesterday he didn't have a very good passing day. It was a rainy day. Look, Jimmy nasty. Garoppolo looked Everybody bad looked too. Bad. That's right. But that was undoubtedly two of the top four teams in the sport. Two of the top six teams in the sport. I believe we have a six. I believe it is the Ravens, Niners, Mm -hmm. Patriots, uh, seven. Chiefs. Saints. Oh, I didn't. Maybe it's eight. Green Bay. Yeah. There's a lot of Seahawks. But I I feel like. Don't sleep on the Vikings. I keep trying to tell people. I wouldn't sleep on the Vikings either. Don't sleep on them. I hope they get. I hope they lose tonight. By the way, I hope the under hits too. But. (laughs) <laughs> the the Ravens Niners two of the top I would say they're two of the top four teams though in the sport mm-hmm. I don't know who the other two teams are but they're definitely the, the elite of the elite and to watch them exchange body blows there were times where I thought the Ravens are going to run away with this that's right there was a time where the Niners looked like they kind of had the lead yep Mostert. The, the Niners, whoever the healthy running back is, they're able to get them off. That's Kyle Shanahan's offense. That incredible. run offense is awesome. It's amazing. Those guys are shot out of a cannon. All of them are the same dude. Coleman, Mostert, Breida, whatever They're all one-step runners. They all are like, I'm fast, and I'm in just a wide-open hole, and I'm downfield. And the Niners are a good matchup for the Ravens uh, because the Ravens can be run on, and the Niners will just stretch you out side to side right. and wait for you to commit and then go up the field. Um Jimmy Garoppolo, I thought, played okay. Mm-hmm. The 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 benefit of the doubt that I give to Jimmy Garoppolo compared to all these other average quarterbacks is that Jimmy doesn't seem – the moment never seems big for him. Mm-hmm. Even when he's under pressure, he has a coolness to him that a lot of other guys don't show. And that's why I, I, I have respect for Jimmy. But you watch that game, Ravens, Niners – did you come away even more impressed with the Ravens? Were you, I felt like I heard a lot of bloviators and prognosticators talking about how they actually left the game impressed with the Niners. I heard a lot of people saying that they didn't think the Niners were for real. 
I don't know what the hell they were paying attention to. You could say that the first six games of the season, but the last The Niners six have been games, for real yeah, for they, like they the last six. Real. I don't get it. They look real. But what was your big takeaway from that game? I think my big takeaway from that game was there's no team that's going to be able to keep up with what the Ravens are doing offensively. Because if any team that had the ability to do it, it was the Niners. They're You're right. It to. did feel like the Niners were trying to keep up with the Ravens. That they did were, feel like the pace yeah, of the game. They were built to be able to stop it. They can't. And I and I, I think they have one of the best inside linebackers in the game. War, and, Werner. Yeah, and, and Warner. I think he's just a, a baller, period. I was very confused at the amount of times that Lamar Jackson kept the ball and that there was no one on backside well, well, contained. That, that's my point. Like, I didn't if, understand. If, if, if I'm going into a game, especially with that type of defense, I'm going to say, okay, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm not respecting the handoff. If 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 Mark right. Ingram has I felt 200 like Bosa yards, was cracking down on Ingram well, the yeah, entire that's, time. That's my point. If Mark Ingram has 200 yards, cool. We can't allow Lamar Jackson to have 200 yards. That's the one part, the person we can't the, allow that. The to two with. prop bets that I should have been betting every week, and they keep going up, is Lamar Jackson rushing yards and Derrick Henry rushing yards. Yes. Lamar Jackson, I think, the had time like of year. 100 yards, and it was at like 80. I've mm-hmm. never seen a quarterback. At, the prop bet was 80. But, yeah, but at the same point, if you let Mark Ingram keep going, the play-action pass, I don't know. It's, but it's, it's devastating. It's so I, I think you can rally around trying to stop the running back. It's devastating when, when Lamar Jackson makes guys miss in a hole. It's just like a Steph Curry, you walk past half court and shoot a three. I've never you seen Lamar stop Jackson that. get stopped on a third or fourth and short. I just haven't. Here is the one concern I do have for Lamar Jackson. The last two weeks, I feel like he's been getting hit in weird places. He's taken some he shots. He got hit in the, the last Niners game. More, he had a few. Me. Also, that rip fumble was incredible. That but was, you're, yeah, but you're right. Wet. It's kind of Lamar okay has been that. Lamar. I don't. I didn't really see it as much two weeks ago. The Niners hit him. Yeah, the last two weeks in my mind, he got hit. Some of some of them are right on the edge of being out of bounds, where he's kind of slowing up, thinking no one's going to touch him. He's getting smacked. I hate to see that, but he's getting hit in different ways now. That's a concern for me. It should be a concern for John Harbaugh as well. So the Ravens just left a six-game stretch that I remember us talking about. Man, if they go five hundred, they should be happy. Mm-hmm. The Seahawks at the peak of their power, the Patriots, we said, oh, they're going to win against the Bengals, the Texans, the Rams, the Niners. Not only do they not go three and three, they don't go four and one, four and two, they don't go five and one, they go six and oh, yeah. and they win those games by a combined point differential of 143. Let's take a look at what the Ravens have done the last six weeks. They beat the Seahawks by 14, okay. the Patriots by 17, yep. the Bengals by 36. Mm-hmm. That Texans team that just beat the Patriots, they beat by 34. Smoked, yep. They beat the Rams by 39 and the Niners by three. 143. Impressive. That They've been impressive. You got to give a little credit <laughs> because when you're playing against the Niners, you got to deal with George Kittle. And I know he spent a lot of time blocking and no that doubt. run game got off. But Chuck, Chuck Clark, the safety for the Ravens, forced a fumble on Jimmy G. And he was his job was to slow down and stop George Kittle just a bit. Two catches for George Kittle. That's impressive. That's great work. The one question, I think Pat Pat might have raised this question. Do you think that he's the Ravens as a team are peaking a little bit too early? We've been we've been saying that for a little bit. I think that. Or are they continue to get better? You know that this sport really comes down to availability. Mm -hmm. And right now, what's incredible to me is they're playing that D-line and they lost their starting center for the year last week. That's right. And I didn't see them really miss a beat. And the the if they can maintain their offensive line, they can maintain their skill players, they're in a position where if they lose a tight end, they still have three more. Yes. It always comes down to injuries at this point of the year. And so the way they're constituted, I think they'll be fine. Now, they're going to face down the stretch. They now go to at Buffalo, which is now turned into like home field advantage. I mean, if Buffalo wins that game and makes the Ravens go to 10 and three, Buffalo will then be 10 and three. That would be insane. Well, here's the thing, though, and and, and I know it's in, in Buffalo, but 
if you say, okay, 49ers defense and what you can you do against that defense compared to Buffalo's defense, and Buffalo is a good defense. They're not on the same level no, as the 49ers. not at all. Not at and, all. And I have to be confident. If I'm on the Ravens and say, you know what, we just beat the best defense in football. Now let's go up there and beat up on a good defense. Buffalo's got an extra week, extra few days because of it's Thanksgiving. It's not about that. It's not, when you're playing against Lamar, Lamar it's not about an extra week. Because you can game plan it. And he puts you in a bind. And that's, You have to question what the heck are you seeing and are you fast enough to get there? I think that the Ravens are built in a way in which it's, it's not like the Rams last year where we were kind of like, who's going to figure out this offense? Yeah. The Ravens' offense is simple. Yeah, you you know it. Yeah, you know who's likely going to have the mm-hmm. ball. Mm-hmm. I think the Ravens' success going forward will come down to the four or five deep balls that Lamar throws every game. Yeah, does he complete them? He hit the one touchdown to Mark Andrews. He had another one where they didn't call the pass interference. It was a little bit questionable, and that's why it was a tough game to throw in. You also look at the next few weeks at Buffalo. It's going to be cold. Home against the Jets it will likely be cold. At Cleveland, mistake by the lake, a lot of wind. Then home against Pittsburgh. They need the bye. But Baltimore is a team that it's okay if it gets cold. We will run 40 times against you. Absolutely. And I, I think on Sunday, by beating the Niners, I, in my opinion, John Harbaugh won coach of the year. Because in my opinion, it was between John Harbaugh and Kyle Shanahan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And for them to go out on Sunday, to milk the last six minutes of the clock, to have your Hall of Fame kicker, Justin Tucker, punch it through, but to really set the tone for the entire game. I want to give the coach of the year to John Harbaugh, not just for the fact that he has him at 10 and two and number one in the AFC and having shellacked the Patriots, the Seahawks, the Texans, the Rams and beat the Niners. For me, it's also the fact that what they did in the off season, what John Harbaugh has instituted in Baltimore after there were thoughts that he might get fired last year. Absolutely. John Harbaugh, to me, is a coach of the year. I can go there. I, I love John Harbaugh. I, I love John Harbaugh because he's obviously shown confidence in Lamar Jackson and his ability to do that when no one else would have designed this type of offense around him. They would have figured out, try to be a pocket pass or things like that. I love that. But as a coach, when you start thinking of situational football, there's nothing like John Harbaugh. I, I just remember – being in special teams meetings, and he'd be like, well, it's fourth and two on the 40. You know, we have a better percentage of yeah. – and this is, this is 15 years ago, when, before analytics even came into play. We have a better percentage of success if we do these things. And you can tell his team understands that. Yeah. You can tell that he preaches that into his team. And I love the way that he's got his team to rally around the quarterback. They believe in him. Young kid. They believe in him. They want him to win. And they built the team specifically for this type of quarterback. Run the football, stop the run. They don't do a great job of stopping the run. But they are physical enough in, the, in, in their game plan defensively to slow a team down so that now you can grind the ball out on the offensive side of the ball. I've been impressed by Harbaugh. I, I, I certainly can make the argument for Kyle Shanahan yeah. and what they've been able to do because that team – you can make an argument for Bill Belichick every year. Every year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but Kyle Shanahan, when you look at that team, before the season, no one really knew what the heck Jimmy G was. He did okay, but everyone's like, okay, we'll see what, what happens between last year right. and this year and see how defenses adjust to him. But that offense still is making ways. For me, the top four seeds for coach of the year, in my opinion, I'm not going to say Zimmer. I'm not going to say uh, – Pete Carroll, I think that's been a lot of Russ. For me, the top four Coach of the Year candidates are Harbaugh, Shanahan, McDermott, and Payton. Sean Payton has the Saints at 10-2, and two, winning six, five games with Teddy Bridgewater. Mm-hmm. Think about it. If, if I told you before the year they wouldn't have uh, Drew Brees for five games, you'd say they'd take a step back. I said they were done is yes. what I said, actually. The Buffalo Bills at 9-3. and three, yep. Talk about building around another sophomore quarterback. If Lamar wasn't doing what he's doing right now, we talk about Josh Allen and that season. Kyle Shanahan and, and how he's turned this franchise in three years into a behemoth. But the reason I give it to Harbaugh is every single week, I feel like he has the coaching edge. And he outcoached Kyle Shanahan this past week. It was it was nail-biter, but that's why I'm going with Harbaugh. I, I like Harbaugh. I like the choice. I think that's a great choice. I, I, I wouldn't argue with that. It could all change. We got four more weeks left. Well, I mean, you got to look at the, to- the total season. I mean, but listen, look at how their team is playing. 
look how they faced some adversity early on. They came back and still continue to play well. Yeah. They beat the teams that no one thought they had a chance of beating. Texans blew them out. They beat the uh, uh, the 49ers last week, this past weekend, and they beat the Patriots. That's huge. So there were two blowouts last uh, this past Sunday that we did not talk about really at length. Green Bay over the Giants and Chiefs over the Raiders. Yeah. Green Bay over the Giants, I don't know if I'm buying Green Bay as a real, real contender. I, I, there's a lot of things that they do when you have Aaron Rodgers. I never want to doubt it. Getting Devontae Park, Devontae Adams back yes. and being healthy is good. But when you really look back at a lot of their wins, so, you know, their big win was at Kansas City. Again, Matt Moore was playing. They get shellacked by San Francisco. They beat Chicago to start the year. The win over Minnesota looks good now. But Denver, Dallas, you know, we kind of see what Dallas is. I don't really see a lot of the big Quality heavyweights. Wins. I don't. Mm-hmm. And when I look at the rest of their schedule, Washington should be a win. Yep. Chicago should be a win. Yep. Then at Minnesota, at Detroit, I just, if Green Bay gets into the playoffs and is facing a New Orleans or a San Francisco, I just don't see them beating them. Well, you got to imagine this. And this is why I like the game for Green Bay yesterday. Cold, rainy, snowy, mix, flurries. Yes. Field looks crazy. That's a playoff game in Lambeau. I know. Then Th- that's why that's why it's so hard to talk about these matchups because if the Saints lose to the Ravens next that's week, that's my point. If they'll have to go to Lambeau, right? That's not good for the Saints. It's very interesting. In that there's so ma- there's so many top seedings up for grabs. Usually, I feel like there's one team that runs away with mm-hmm. it in the NFC, and then the Patriots in the AFC. But I also know that it's been historic in terms of elimination. So, in New Orleans is in. They're the NFC South champion, yep. and they've owned that division. The teams that have been eliminated, Cincinnati, Detroit, Atlanta, Giants, Miami, Arizona. Mm-hmm. 26 teams in playoff con- in contention after week 13 is the fewest since 2014. And you have to go back to t- 2005 for fewer. So we've eliminated, eliminated a lot of the weakness. But in the NFC, it is so top-heavy, Minnesota could get a bye. And they're a wild card team. Seattle, if New or- if if they beat San Francisco in Week 17, could go from a wild card seed to the number one seed in the NFC. That's right. That's the right. the playoff seeding is all over the place, and I just don't think Green Bay is up there with them. It's also pretty cool that it's going to go to the last week of the season. Which the fact that San Francisco is playing Seattle in Week yes, 17 is nuts. That, that's yeah. That's that's why they have those, those division games at the last week, which is pretty cool. The other game though. Chiefs blow out the Raiders. Easy. If you listen to the Warren Sharp podcast, I went on a whole rant about how there's no better time to bet against Derek Carr than in the cold against Kansas City. Yep. He is now 0-6, two interceptions, one of them being a pick six. I also think that they had a wild extra point return for a, a two-point conversion that hit the over for some people. I didn't get to watch it. They felt the need to switch over to Denver Chargers. No offense. <laughs> there are two teams that are like three and four wins. It's Phillip Rivers. And, like, I'm over the three stooges of watching Phillip Rivers at the end of games. With two minutes left, he's going to throw a pick yeah. or do something dumb. I don't need to see it. But the Chiefs, the Chiefs showed us something interesting. A 31-point win with Patrick Mahomes only throwing for 175 yards Mm -hmm. and your leading rusher being Darwin Thompson for 44. What they did get yesterday was... Three turnovers. Pressure and turnovers. The Kansas City Chiefs defense, low-key, is up there right now in terms of pass defense. Now, you can do what Josh Jacobs did and rush for over 100 yards in the first half Mm -hmm. because that's what the Chiefs will allow you. But in terms of passing yards per game, they're at 16th. They're right in the middle of the pack. That's not bad from where they started at because they were getting beat up. You got Tyron Matthew back there ball hawking. This kid, Juan Thornhill, the one that had the return. They got some young corners that are pretty good. Mm -hmm. Chris Jones is healthy. Mm -hmm. D. Ford will be back. I, I look at the Chiefs and I go, now that's a team that if they get in the playoffs, can scare anybody. Do you know that Mahomes, Kelsey, and Tyree Kill have all only played together three games this year? 
Yeah, that's kind we of haven't even seen the clicks. The one thing I'm wondering about the Chiefs, can they ever get a consistent run game? Oh, that's the question. Can they stop the run, which I think is – I don't think so. I don't think they can do that. I think they're kind of okay with letting it happen. I think their passing defense has been better because the, de the defensive line has gotten a little bit healthier. But when you have that offense – it puts so much pressure on the opposing offense, right? And so usually we're saying offense versus defense, yes. but their offense puts so much pressure on their opposing offense that you have to score touchdowns every time you have the ball. Now the play caller is like, okay, I got to draw up some crazy crap just to be able to score because if we don't score, we can't keep up with this team. Oakland Raiders, three turnovers, we talked about that. 12 doggone penalties. You can't – I don't care who you are. I don't care who you have on your team, whether you have Derek Carr, whether you have Brett Favre. You can't win. You can't win football that way. And, and discipline is something that John Gruden preaches all the time. 12 penalties jumped out at me. As I'm looking at their possessions, interception first one, fumble, punt, turnover and downs, interception, miss field goal, punt. You can't win that way. And that's against the Chiefs defense that is average at best. The Oakland Raiders have a worse point differential than the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Oakland Raiders have a worse point differential than the New York Jets. The Oakland Raiders are 6-6 six and six and have been outscored in their games by 87 points. You don't see that. that that's not something you see. Yes. This is a team that I think was a little bit overinflated, and I think we got on the train, and I understand we it. jumped on the train. But yeah. they, they, I love Max Crosby. I love that kid. He's a great pass rusher. They've had a ton of injuries. Their secondary stinks. Um and they really don't have any weapons no, other than Darren Waller. They're a team that's Josh building. Jacobs. They got a bunch of oh, draft picks. Sure. They're a team that's building. This is even at, let's say they end their season at eight and eight. That's a great season for them, especially with all the Antonio Brown. Fiasco that's a great and all that. season for them. Here's the thing about the Chiefs. Abrams has been hurt all season. Do you think the Chiefs this Sunday can go into New England and beat the Patriots? Hmm. Tom Brady came out and said, we're not 2-10, and ten, we're 10-2. Ten and two. Which means that Tom Brady, which he always does, goes from, we're not that good, to stop talking crap about that, about us, we're really good. Which is the worst time to play the Patriots. Patriots off of a loss, because if they beat the Patriots, tell me if they can win these games. Home against the Broncos. Yes. At the Bears. Yes. Home against the Chargers. Yes. Okay, that's three. If they beat the Patriots, they go to 12-4. and four. Mm -hmm. it Makes it much more interesting. Bills could lose another game. Bills are playing the Ravens. If the Chiefs get some home field. That's different. So here's the Patriots game in a nutshell. It's all up and, for and, grabs. And, it's and, so good. In my mind. I think at this point the Patriots have won, what, 21 straight at home? It's just hard to beat at home. It's hard to beat to go into Foxborough. Weather. I have heard from so many players that it's such an intimidating and, place to play. Well, absolutely. Again, I told you, there are teams that walk into the field and they see Bill Belichick or on the other sideline like, oh, we can't win the game. But day. it's also apparently the way the Patriots have the stadium set up with the Super Bowl banners. Absolutely. with them, And it's, the, it's constantly reminding you of how unstoppable they are that it has to get into your psyche. Always. All of those things play a part into it. All Every last one of those things play a part into it. And then you get into the game, and now you have to be – you can't make a mistake. Because if you make a mistake, they capitalize on every mistake. And you go into the game, you say, well, you know what? Yeah, we, so you're not running fast. You're oh, running out to make a mistake. You're trying to figure out – you're not – you're thinking. That's the one thing you can't do. Right. That's the one thing that the Ravens – Made the Patriots do. They made them think. They're trying yeah. to figure out where the ball is going. Yeah, Lamar doesn't think. He just wins. He just wins. Then he just runs. And and so that's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Uh, I never asked you this before. But but let me, let me, before we go there, let think about this for the Chiefs. Okay. The Patriots take away your best player, right? Do what you do best. So take that's, away Tyreek Hill or Kelsey. I would probably say Tyreek. So okay. Again, the number is three. You have to have three players that you can you can't take away. That's the same type so of thing. It's Tyreek. Kelsey, and then they need Sammy. They, if those guys could have a good game, yeah. then they can win. If one of those running backs, I feel like LaShawn McCoy is good for like a half a quarter every game. I think LaShawn McCoy is resting his legs for the playoffs. That's what I think. I think Andy is saying his Ooh. legs are dead right now. We're resting them because we're going to need to be able to run the football, use his ability out of the backfield. I love that. Playoffs. That's what I think. You got a source on that? It's a good feeling to have. Ooh. 
I love that. That sounds great. I think that's great planning. What what was the Because you're gonna need them. What was the state I've never asked you this before? The stadium stadium opener game against the Bucks when Joe Jurovicious caught that crazy gate touchdown. Do you remember that Is night? Is that the first game in, in the link? <laughs> first game in the yes. link. Yeah. And so we had played them in yeah. the NFC championship game. They won the Super Bowl. In the last game in the vet. So we were pissed off it's about a, it's that. It's a story that is in this podcast a lot because I snuck into that game with my dad. Did you? My dad was cleaning ice machines and refrigeration at the stadium, and we said that there was some mess-ups in the ice machines. Uh-huh. So we had to get in there, and we stood on those steps right under where Rocky came yeah, out. Yeah, and The reason I had a lot of stuff with the podcast is that was Sims's first game as a pro. Was it? He was a rookie because they had just won. He got drafted uh-huh, after that. He uh-huh. was on the sideline. Did you have a good game that game? I had a decent game. I had a big, big kickoff return to start the game. I had a decent game there. I feel like the amount of times that you guys had big kick returns that, like, remember the game the year before against the Bucks? Yeah. Big kick return mm-hmm. by Brian Mitchell. Brian Mitchell, yeah. And then Deuce Staley, like, 30-yard That's touchdown. Right. That's right. Oh, I thought it was over. Yeah. I mean, we, we lost that game, too. Pretty sure we lost the first game in the vet. Which kind of sucks to the same. Well, the vet, that was like no, the, 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 the link. The you link. did. I was there. Yeah. That was the game. It sucked. It was the Joe Jurovicious pop-up to himself that catch. It was? Yeah. It sucked. I, I, I appreciate you bringing that up. The heartbreak that I I just wasn't sure if you'd had anything. My rookie year break. and my second year. I appreciate that. that the rookie year was the Rams? No. No, my rookie year was the dog on the Bucks. When we, the last game in the vet. That was my rookie year. Man, the Rams lost in the NFC Championship game. You were not on the team yet. That was the- Buck Holter got hurt in that game, and they stopped running the football. He was having a great game. They stopped running the football because he got hurt. I, it was also the um, Freddie Mitchell across the – was Freddie Mitchell on that team? He was drafted for you. Yeah. Freddie Mitchell across the middle and Aeneas Williams kind of pass interference, but they didn't call it because uh-huh. it's Aeneas Williams. Uh-huh. But after that, what do they do? Lido Shepard, Sheldon Brown, Michael Lewis, right. Brian Westbrook. That's right. Best Eagles draft ever. Todd Harriman's? No, he was a couple years later. He probably didn't get drafted. He was part six. of the Brent Selleck, Todd Harriman's, yeah. Trent Cole draft. Yeah. Another up there. Good draft. Good draft. Not as good as the other one. But Eagles last year, not a good draft. They're still trying to figure things out draft-wise. <laughs> um, but they're dead. We've, we've laid them the rest. So rest, if rest the Eagles beats. come back, they, are, they, are, they will now be known – after every win is the zombie Eagles. No, if and they if come they back, make a zombie apocalypse, it'll be a miracle if they come back. Yeah, but it's but they're dead. They're dead so far. If they come back, they'll be a miracle. Stop it. If they come back, play the music because they're dead. <sighs> Disappointing death. All black. Like I said, you go down to Miami to retire, and that's what they did. For Brian, what? You ask, you ask Greg Jennings, why do teams go to Miami to lose? Because he they told you party. why. I don't think they party, but again, that thought process, you think in Miami, easy win. Fun in the sun. You come fun, out flat. Fun and you're done. Fun and you're done. Uh, I did see a, a T-shirt in the Walmart store that said Randall Cunningham is the rocket man. What? Are you sitting, Are you kidding me? Yeah. Got to get this shit copyrighted, bro. Hey. For Brian Westbrook. The Rocket Man. The real. The real Rocket Man. On the L-E-F-K-O-E. Man, we are not going to have a show on Wednesday. My ass has to be in Atlanta. Uh, but we will be back on Thursday, Friday uh, for... We do not have a podcast coming out this Thursday with Brian. We do have the Warren Sharp podcast. So I will see you next week. See you next week, brother. Travel safely. Mourn. Yeah. This evening. And, and, and make sure, enjoy yourself in Atlanta. I will. Okay, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> I'll tell you something.